Hey y'all, I just want to say first off, if you're watching this video out of necessity, I just want to tell you I'm sorry that you are going through whatever you're going through and to hang in there and happy healing. First month, just celebrate the small victories and each week uh, there'll be a big difference week to week uh, from my experience. And having this has really helped a lot with my um, independence and my mental health because it's allowed me to get outside and be in the places I love and spend time with my dogs outside. So I will go into more detail on the all-terrain new rover. Also wanted to mention if you like this video or you're looking for more information on recovering from an ankle or foot injury and the recovery process, check out some of my other videos that will be in the link below on sort of what I went through week by week, equipment that I'm really glad I had. And if you also uh, like what you're seeing and wanna keep supporting me and what I do, hit that subscribe button, hit like and subscribe down below and check out the upcoming videos. All right, y'all, I'm just gonna do a quick review of the all-terrain knee scooter. I've been using this ever since I broke my ankle and had surgical repair, non-weight bearing for six weeks. Um, we live out in the middle of nowhere and I like to get outside. So this was very handy because the regular knee scooter does not do well on anything but indoor surfaces or, or hard concrete, flat sidewalks, that kind of thing. So this has been really nice. So I just wanted to show y'all some nice features about it. Um, it's got the basket up front like the other knee scooter does. It's only got one brake. Um, and you can also see it's only got one rear wheel instead of two like the regular knee scooter does. So that's your only wheel with a brake. And then we added, it does come with a with what I call a training wheel. We tried without it. I don't recommend that. We immediately put the training wheel on because without it, there was, there was not a lot of lateral stability. Um, you can see it's got, it's got the more rugged outdoor type of tire. Looks like a mountain bike tire. And um, it also has a, has a very thick padded knee pad with a concavity to it that I really like. It keeps my knee from sliding off. So, and then the only other thing I've had to really watch out for is just getting on any type of side slope. Um, it does pretty good going up and down slopes, but going across a side slope, that is where I probably would avoid at all costs when you're on this knee scooter. I want to just mention up front why I'm spending so much time on this and why I do think it's a good investment. Um, and I'll provide a link of where I got it actually. I just ordered it. Um, probably within a couple weeks after my surgery. Um, the reason it's so important to me is non-weight bearing, not being able to put weight on one leg and being mobile with crutches or a walker is very, very difficult, very limiting. Um, non-weight bearing, walking with crutches or a walker is very taxing, very exhausting, a lot of upper body strength. So with that said, this really increases my distance, where I can go, how fast I can go, um, hands-free, you know, not hands-free on this, but I can put stuff in my basket. I can carry stuff. I can stand in the kitchen with my knee on the pad and do things. So it definitely increases your independence. With that said, you do have to be careful. You have to have good balance. You have to make sure you're not falling off of this. There, <clears throat> there is some risk in using a knee scooter especially the indoor knee scooter, which I'll mention briefly, it had a very flat pad. It didn't have the raised edges that this pad, knee pad has. My knee did slip off of it a few times, especially if I was doing something like trying to back up with it out of a tight space or out of my bathroom. So please be careful about that. Please be careful you don't turn too fast. They tend to be uh, less stable laterally, side to side. So keep that in mind doing whatever you can to make yourself feel more mobile and more independent while you're going through, especially the non-weight bearing stage of your recovery.
Let's go down a little bit of a slope. If I'm coming up a pretty steep slope, I like to engage the brake as I take a step just so it doesn't roll backwards on me. That's one thing you're probably going to have to do just so you don't lose your momentum.
let me just show you how you would fold the handlebar system down if you are trying to transport it, put it in a car, or just store it away. Um, you can take this basket off. It just goes on these little clips. It just slides, slides down on those clips and then pops back off. And then this entire stem and bar will fold down. There's a clamp right here at the front. You pop the clamp up just like that. And now this clamp actually rocks forward out of this groove. So you just rock it forward. It's attached to a little pin. That pin's got to slide slightly to the right towards me in this video. You slide that pin over to the side. Now it releases that little hole right there and lets this whole bar and stem rock down. And now you can put this in the back seat of a car a lot easier because this is pretty tall, takes up a lot of room. Then when you get where you're going or you get back home, you just rock the whole thing forward, pull that pin to the side, out of the way so now it can release and pop back into that little side hole right there. Rock the whole clamp up back into that groove and now tighten that clamp down. If the clamp feels too loose, you can actually twist, you can turn it a couple times and make it even tighter or even looser if it doesn't seem like it wants to clamp all the way down. Um, see, like I've turned it and now it's real loose. It doesn't catch. So I'm gonna turn it to the right other adjustments that you want to make to fit it to you, raising the bars up and down and putting, locking the pin in place. And then you can raise the knee pad up or down as well. And it's got a pin, the same kind of locking mechanism um, to get that at the height you want. And then it's got the air pneumatic tires that you have to pump up with air. They do kind of get a little flat, just like bicycle tires. And it's the same as a bike tire um, valve, and I'll show how to do that. All right, we're going to fill up the air tires on the knee rover, and they are tubed pneumatic tires just like a regular bicycle or a mountain bike and this is the air compressor plugs into a wall outlet that my husband's been using to pump up the tires so we'll just show how to do that right quick and it says on the actual tire on the rim it'll say inflate to 40 psi show y'all how to just pump it up manually with what is a small, this is actually a portable uh, pocket rocket made by Top Peak. I'll try to remember to do a link. Um, the website says to pump this up with any car or bike tire inflator with a yeah. compact head, whatever that means. So what we found means is that this so this is not gonna work. It'll never fit inside this small wheel frame. Um, so this is what I think the website means by small compact head. Like I said, it's just a little portable hand pump. It barely fits on there. I feel like this is a little bit of a design flaw and I'd recommend they make this a lot easier to get to the air valve in the future. So this is a Schrader valve and I've got this already set up to take a Schrader valve. This is reversible for the two different types of bike valves. And you're gonna try to get it on there till you hear it. a little bit of air coming. 
and then you've got to pop this out to lock it in place and open it. And this is kind of in the way, so this takes a second to do. But if you can feel the air going in, you know you've got a good connection. You don't know how much air you're putting in, so this is gonna be more by feel of just when you feel it nice and inflated to what it was before or how the other tires are. And once you've got that pumped up like you want it, you just pop this back down and pop that off. So you just pull that cable through and then tighten it back down. You want to try it out? Oh yeah, that's already locking a lot better. Okay, so you just pull that cable out a little further and then tighten it back down. All right. One other thing I want to mention about using the all-terrain knee rover, especially for outside use, outdoor use on uneven surfaces, there is a little bit of a, a learning curve. Um, I definitely feel like the first week or two, I was going super slow, clamping the brake down as hard as I could. Anytime I was going down any kind of incline, definitely fearful of falling off or turning it over or re-injuring my leg. So there was definitely that fear factor in the beginning, going super slow, spending several weeks getting more confident on it, learning how good my balance was, learning the limitations of the scooter, um, what kind of slope could I do, could I not do. So I just wanted to mention that you know, if you're feeling um, any type of apprehension or fear on it initially, I think that's totally normal. I think I think it does take a little bit of getting used to if you're using it on uneven surfaces and just be patient with yourself and go slow and be cautious. And the only other thing I wanted to mention was just how important it was to get, get the knee pad at the right height for your height so that you uh, feel even and your hips and pelvis are not um, at any type of uneven angle. You want that knee pad at the right height. Otherwise, you're gonna start feeling it in your hip or your low back. If you've got the knee pad too high or too low, um, you're gonna notice that your, your good leg, which you're pushing with, you know, is gonna feel either too long or too short Get that knee pad where you want it. If that knee pad doesn't feel quite right, think about what shoes you're wearing. So when I'm outside, I tend to wear a pretty heavy duty hiking boot, uh, laces high up on the ankle to protect my good ankle. And that's a pretty thick soled shoe, which effectively makes my good leg, my pushing leg longer. So that knee pad probably is a little bit higher than what I maybe would want it if I was inside uh, with no shoe or a regular shoe on. So think about your shoe selection. And if the knee pad doesn't feel quite right, think about a, a thinner or a thicker shoe or boot, and that might make you feel like your leg uh, reaches the ground exactly the way you want it. <laughs>